I thought you forgot how to do that for a minute. The best in the world at fast starting new people in World Financial Group in the Midwest in the Oak Brook office. You got him right here. I want to start by congratulating all of you for being here. This is a CEO club meeting, and I hope you know what that means to be here. You've qualified to be here. This meeting in particular, we opened up the doors to people who did a certain level of production also, but in the past, you've always had to do at least 25 recruits in a month to qualify for these meetings. If you had gotten 10, you were considered in the junior CEO club. You got a little pink baby shirt that says, I want to try it, or something like that. And you got to sit in the way back, hush up, and just take notes. But as you could tell, we wanted to open this up because we believe we're launching a new year, a new career for everybody. And uh, really, all of you in the room today represent the top 5 to 10% of all of the organizations in all of the company today. And you're here because you're the foundation that we're going to build 2004 and the entire rest of our careers on. And all of you in the room were expecting and hoping someday to be up here on stage. I remember when Dan joined the company. I was already one of the up-and-comers, big guys. And where Dan is today, I was when Dan joined the business. I saw him as this new guy, hoping and wishing to get five minutes on stage or be a two-minute speaker. And now take a look at where he is. What an testament to the system and the leadership that Ed provided and our system provided. Those of you that are here today based on production, we're hoping that you get from this meeting the recruiting and building bug. We're hoping you leave and you say, you know what? I want to get a whole bunch of people on my team and teach them how to produce like I do so that I can override a business someday. Some of you that got here on recruiting, we want you to catch the rest of the system and make sure that you follow through with all of those recruits so that you can actually get production out of that and you could build leaders with all the raw material that you bring to the factory. But more important than anything, I hope that you have fun here with this company. I hope that you have fun here with this business. That's the American dream really, isn't it? Isn't the American dream to have fun, make a lot of money and not really do much for it? <laughs> Is that really? I mean, that's the dream. <clears throat> Certainly, we know if you work really hard, you'll make a lot of money in just about anything in life. This is probably one of the things that'll pay you a lot more for the hard work than other things. But you've got to have fun while you're doing this thing, too. You're going to be attracting people. People are going to want to see you, Kevin McGinnis, and want to be in business with you because you enjoy what you're doing so much more than they do. Every time you run into them, you've got a smile on your face, and they don't have a smile on theirs. Every time they ask you, Gira Maharo, how are you doing with that business? And you say, I'm doing great, I'm loving it, I'm having fun and making a lot of money. They've got to say, well, geez, I'm not making a lot of money, I'm not having fun. I want to do what you're doing. And do you know that some people actually associate with our company and they get so frustrated because of the competition that they cease to have fun here and then in turn cease to attract anybody? Because if you're not excited, energetic, and having fun, why would anybody want to do what you're doing? That's the first and foremost thing I want to make sure you leave here with this weekend. Make sure you go home and that you work hard and you work diligently. Anything in this business, in this world worth having is going to require some effort put into it. But I want you to have fun along the way. Can you promise me you'll have fun? Yes. Nobody having fun in this company has ever quit. I promise you. If they got nothing more out of this meeting, nobody having great amounts of fun has ever quit. People quit when they cease to have fun. There's people making money in this thing that actually quit because they cease to have fun. Isn't that amazing? Let's take a look here at the fast start. Before we get started, a lot of people ask about this eye. They say, what happened to your eye, Jeff? I dropped my left. If you remember in boxing, if you drop your left in boxing, someone can come around and catch you with a big right, and that's what happened in this business. And uh, Rob did that. We were discussing what I'm going to speak on today, and I wanted to do his part, he wanted to do mine, and, we, and basically he won. So, <laughs> anyhow, you know, a lot of you are dropping your left also in the business. You know what dropping your left is in this business? And it causes you to get knocked out? After all the work in building a system, 
in a BPM night like Dan said, out of all the effort and courage you have to get up to invite somebody down, making that list, turning the elimination list into an actual prospect list, making the call, you work so hard to get somebody down, you've got tour catchers and dream catchers and all kinds of butterfly catchers. You got the whole deal going in your operation. Someone gives up a great presentation. You got a $10,000 piece of machinery in your office. And then you get somebody in, you get their money, and that's it. You stop providing any benefit for them at that point. You put them out there on their own and say, all right, go get them, champ. And you just cheer them on from there. You let them go. You know, a lot of people, that's where everyone ends with a new person, after they get the check. They can't wait to run to the grease board in their office, put a little check mark because they got a new recruit. Woohoo! I got one. I'm going to San Jose Hayes match, and that was it. That was three for the month. That's all they wanted to do is get the counter, count that one person, and that's it. There's so much more potential in that if you tap it. But so few people really tap that. Most people, that's where it ends, but really that's where it's supposed to start for our business is with the fast start. Very interesting. What, how many of you have children? Can I see by show of hands? Ed, you just had a baby. What's your daughter's name? Isabel. Um, Isabella. Imagine bringing Isabella home. Bring her into your big, beautiful house. Got this little precious baby. You've been dreaming about having that baby for nine months. You spent hours thinking of the name, what you're going to do, how you're going to raise her. You just dream of it, talk about it. Everybody asks your wife about it. You finally get that beautiful baby after the struggle and giving birth. You bring that baby on home, get in the house with the baby. You look at her beautiful face and you say, look, here's how it works here. The diapers are over there. The refrigerator's over there. The bathroom is over there. Your bedroom is up to the left. We'll see you later. Good luck. Was that absurd? That's absurd to do with a baby. Has any, have any of you done that with your children? But you've done it with your new recruit. You've brought that new person in the business and said, all right, well, we have meetings on Tuesdays and Saturdays. They start at 7 o'clock. Dress sharp. Here's a top 25 list. Go make it. Get some people down here, would you please? Try and get three people to your next meeting. Man, this is going to be great. You're going to make so much money. Licensing. Oh, by the way, go talk to that guy. They'll help you with the licensing. And you're done with them. And you don't walk them through every step of the process, yet they're so precious and so needing of attention and time and guidance. At that point, thank goodness for some people in the Pomona office that have a tremendous system where literally, if somebody just gets around it, they might get pushed through each step. But for the most part, a lot of offices really aren't set up that way, especially if you're in an expansion office. Your people wander aimlessly and never get anything done. That's why I believe it is so important from the time they fill out that membership agreement that's when your process and your duties as a leader become like a parent and you have to help that person get started. At the top 25 list, as Rob described it, you're supposed to help somebody develop the top 25 prospect list. Read the book. This is our business format system book. Five dollars is what it costs. I wish the company would charge a thousand for it. If we paid a thousand bucks for this thing, we'd read it, wouldn't we? But since you spend five bucks on it, usually we value things based upon how much we paid for it. Said five bucks, well, I'll treat it like five bucks. There it goes. In the stack with all the rest of my stuff. This is our whole deal right here. We don't charge enough people to get, we don't charge people enough to become part of this company. People should pay a lot more for this company. You know, I had a guy in my business, he owned, he owned a gym actually, powerhouse gym crewed him in the business and I was helping him get started and we were together going to call one of his friends who owned a big construction company and he was going to try and intrigue his friend about our business. His name was Don and Don actually called up his friend Tom from Michigan who owns this big construction company and he called him up and got his answering machine. I had coached him on what to say and he did pretty close. He did pretty well and he said, you know what Tom, this is Don, I want to tell you about this new company I got started with. You know, I own the gym, but I'm kind of getting out of the, the uh, 
the exercise business and I'm getting into the financial industry. A lot more money in it. This company has spent millions of dollars in computer systems, so I don't have to spend that money. They've built subsystems like a franchise so I could just follow it and be ultra successful. They've got contracts with some of the biggest, most respected companies in the world, and I got all of it for a hundred. I got it, it was amazing. It's all it costs, a hundred to get started. Give me a call if you're interested and hung up the phone. And I said, well, that was pretty good. I probably wouldn't have said some of the things you said. The guy calls Don back when Don's not available and leaves him a message. Don, hey, this is Tom. Just got off the job site. We're building some homes. Want to tell you it was great to hear about that new company. I was always thinking about getting in the financial industry. Actually, the construction industry is winding down up here, and I want to let you know that I'm surprised that it only costs 100000 to start. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. How do you respond to that message? No, I meant a hundred dollars. Why is that? You know how scared some people are to ask for the hundred dollars at the end of the hiring interview? It's a hundred bucks for the opportunity of a lifetime. We're afraid. You start a construction company, buy the truck. The truck costs fifteen grand. You want one piece of heavy equipment? 50 grand. You want someone to design a logo for your business? 1,500 bucks. We're asking for 100 bucks. Oh, I hate it. I wish it were thousands. Then everybody that got in would be serious about it, committed to it. They'd want their money. Everyone gets in a business and wants to at least break even, hopefully make a lot of money. True or false? We got all these people in our business trying to get back their 100 bucks. What a shame. Million dollar opportunity, as Ed was talking about earlier, people are trying to get a hundred bucks. Unbelievable. Here's our system. We get somebody new in, create the right mentality, get them focused on the business. Here's what we have to do with new people. Help them make their list. If you send somebody home with a prospect list to make out on their own, I promise you they're going to make an elimination list. They're not going to make a prospect list. They're going to say, well, do I want to put my Uncle Joe on here? No, he already makes enough money. I'm not putting him on the list. My Aunt Susie, she's too busy. She wouldn't want to do this thing. And so she, what they do is they figure out who wouldn't be interested. You ever send someone out with a top 25 list and tell them to bring it back filled out and they bring back two names? And you wanted 25. I know none of you are going to admit it in the room, but I bet most of you have done it at one time or another. And they've come back with two names on the list. If you sit with them, as Rob said, and you play the name game, and you challenge them at the end of the hiring interview, they will make a list. You have to steam them. It says it in the book. Memory jogger list is in the book. You're supposed to sit there with the list in front of you and read it to them, the memory jogger names, and have them write them down. And then you have to sell them the dream of what each prospect on their list may mean to them. Who's this here on the list? Lucille Smith. Oh, she's the principal at my son's junior high school. Really? No kidding. Do you know we have programs for schools and teachers? How many teachers are at that school? I don't know, 30 or 40? Do you know that we can get in there and get the whole program for the whole school and all 30 or 40 teachers would be your clients like this? And then don't teachers hang out with other teachers from other school districts? This literally could turn into four or five hundred teachers, each putting in a few hundred dollars a month in their 403B plan, and you know what that would mean to you? Literally, probably about sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year consistent income without ever doing anything again. And that principal, if she came aboard as an associate and opened the doors, she'd probably make forty to fifty thousand extra a year just for opening the doors. We got to give her a call. Let's call her up right now. And then she goes, "Okay, let's let's call her." And then you grab the phone and pick it up, even if the person doesn't have the number out, the name. You have the phone in your hand. You're like, "Let's call." Let's tell her about this. And you get ready to make that call with that person to that person to get an appointment to tell them about this. You can do it with every single position on every person's list. My kids of sells BMWs. Oh my goodness. Who buys BMWs? Wealthy people. Imagine all this 
clients. He probably sells 10 to 20 cars a month. That's 10 to 20 millionaires he can get us in front of a month after he sells them the car. He can flip the name to us and then we can meet with them and do all their financial stuff and we'll probably make $5,000 to 10,000 per client and he'll make a couple thousand for the referral. Do you think Mike would be interested in making an extra couple thousand per referral 20 times a month? 40 grand extra a month for Mike? Let's give him a call. Hurry up, let's go. What's his number? He will, he's gonna wanna hear about this. And then you make the call and get on the phone, Mike, Mike, I'm sitting here with Ed Milet. He told me that you sell about 10 to 20 BMWs a month. Boy, do we have something to show you. What's your schedule look like the couple, next couple days? We need to get together and talk about what we're doing. How'd you like to pick up an extra 20, 30,000 bucks a month? What is this about? Tell me more about it. It doesn't matter, you're on the phone for Ed. Ed can't believe what's going on. He's excited, he starts to hyperventilate. <laughs> and all he wants to do is get that, and, and he's really fill, throwing out more names. Soon as you make a few phone calls for somebody brand new and set appointments or get someone coming to a meeting, it doesn't matter what scripts you use. As long as you've got some script process, you need to learn some words to use so they roll off your tongue like normal conversation. But you need to call people for new people. The whole fast start, I could, I could tell you a list of 20 things you have to do in fast starting somebody new. Eric Carter, if you don't pick up the phone and make some calls for your new guy, you're sending your baby to go change themselves, feed themselves, take care of themselves. Now, are you going to want to do it forever? No, you don't want to create a dependency relationship with your new person. You want to make a few, and then you have them make a few with you right there. Then you call them in for a little phone session where you and them work together on this. It's all part of the fast start, Louise. I know you know that. You care about your new people and you do that with them. If, if you have not made several new calls for your new people, you are risking exposing them to the scenario of disaster, which is why most people quit this business. You take the brunt of negativity if there is any to be had. If I'm with Dan calling his warm market and I call Rob Day, and I say, hey Rob, Dan asked me to give you a call. He said you're one of the sharpest guys he knows. He said that you already have a successful business background. You've ran some businesses. You're entrepreneurial and a good family man. Our company's looking for some people with those skills to fill some full and part-time positions. When can we get together to talk more about this? And Rob says, Dan? Dan Charlier? He owes me 50 bucks. I've been looking for that guy. I'm sitting on the phone, Dan's across from me, I go, hey, well he's been looking for you too. <laughs> yeah, well does that mean that you're interested then? No way, I'm not interested in anything that guy's doing. All righty then, well we'll get back with you then in a few months when you're more ready to hear about this, bye. And I say, Dan, he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. <laughs> he said, call back in a couple months, he's really gonna be interested then. Let's call someone else. <laughs> Let me tell you. I took the brunt of it instead of Dan. I'm not going anywhere, I love this business. That guy, if, that, if Dan got that message from his friend, he's done. Right there, he's done. You lost your new guy because you had him call a guy who wasn't interested. But I didn't take it personal. I don't even know who Rob Day is. Let him say something negative about Dan. I'll let it roll off my back. Maybe Rob's just having a bad day. You know, most of your people call people at the wrong time. And, and, but what, the, what happens, they get the brunt of the punishment. Or they start asking all kinds of questions, and the person gets in a scenario of disaster. Does everyone know what the scenario of disaster is? Anybody here experienced that in their business before? <laughs> Who here loves the scenario of disaster and getting that in? How many of you have disastered your markets before? Until you learn a script, practice a script, get trained properly and watch somebody do it, you should not be making calls for yourself. You know how long you should take to learn all that stuff? First couple days. After your first week, you should be on your own. Maybe meeting with your leader once in a while to curtail what you say slightly. Get the right tone of voice. Know how to ask the right questions. Get the appointment. Most people don't do that. Most people do not do that, folks. Nobody's calling for their teammates. You want an explosion in your business tomorrow? Who'd like an explosion off their next recruit? How many of you have heard you're one recruit away from explosion? You're one recruit away from explosion if you fast start that new person. 
If you don't, you will never be one recruit away from an explosion because you're dreaming and hoping that one person's going to come in and just pick this thing up and run with it. The baby's going to run around the house, change themselves, feed themselves, make some calls, put themselves to bed. They aren't going to do it, I promise you. They aren't going to do it. Why don't people like making calls? Fear of rejection, right? Do you know the greatest human need in the world is to be loved and accepted? That's what all of us really want. We want love and acceptance. That's what we want more than deep down, under all the layers. We want to be loved and accepted. And you know what? When somebody says no to us, we don't feel loved and accepted. We feel rejected. And it hurts. And most people don't like to feel that way. So therefore, after they get a little bit of rejection, they don't prospect anymore. Proof of the pudding. When you go get most of your prospecting done at the beginning of your career or later on, first month of everybody's career, they usually talk to the most people ever. After they make the money, they get the watches, the rings, all the success. They don't prospect nearly as much as they did when they were brand new and excited. Why? Because they, they keep remembering what no feels like. All of you with children, what does no mean to your child? Anyone have a three-year-old? I have a nephew, he's three. When you say no to your three-year-old, what does that mean to him? What does he usually do? When you say no, does he cry and go, oh, forget it then? What does he do? He asks again. He tries 18 different ways to close you on a yes. No. Please, no. Please, no. Please, no. <laughs> then they throw a tantrum. I want it! I want it! No. Please. They give you the puppy dog eyes. Pretty please. Do you love me? And all the time you say no, then they'll go to mom. Please. No does not mean no to a kid. They don't take it personally. They don't even hear it. Why as adults do we take it so personally? Feels like someone stabbed us in the heart. You call your buddy, you interested in coming to a BBM? No. Oh, okay. So dramatic. And you feel like you're dying. You got to toughen up. Thicken the skin. Reprogram your brain that no isn't bad. That it's okay. Go back to being three. We do a little training in our office on this, a little role playing. I want to show you this. We're going to take a minute and really do this. I want you to pair up with the person next to you, look each other right in the face, and just say no. 18 different ways. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you, hey, wait. Yes. Don't tell me no yet. I got to teach you one more thing. Wait. Look at each other. Say it in loud. Say it fast. No, make all kinds of mean faces. No, no way, no. And just do that with each other. Take a minute. Let's do it. Do it. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. Stop. Yes! Stop! No! No! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You're desensitizing yourself. This is high-end military training. I wasn't part of the Marines like Dan, but I've studied a little bit on the internet, of course. I heard they do something like this. We're desensitizing you and getting you ready for the field. Now I want you to try something. I want one of you to say, no, 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 no. And I want the other one to nod their head yes and smile. Watch Rob and I do it. Come on up here, Rob. Everybody, Rob Day. Am I the no or You're going to no guy. You're the no guy. And I'm the smiley yes guy. Ready? Go. No. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. As the person saying no to you and you're smiling to go like this, the person saying no, feel how hard it is to keep saying no. 
They keep trying to put a mean face on with someone smiling and saying, yeah. It's very difficult, and then switch it up. Ready? Really, give this a try. You'll be surprised. Go. Keep a straight face. You can't stay mean. You can't. It's so, you can't do it. It's so hard to say no when someone's smiling and saying, yeah. I saw you. You lasted. Schleyman lasted about five no's. And Guillermo got him with that big, happy smile of his. Schleyman just smiled, too. And he was done. As soon as he smiled, that no turned into a no, no. And he forgot to do this, and he was kind of like, no. And he was just nodding, and it screwed him up. <laughs> Folks, we need to not take no's personally. As a matter of fact, I had a guy in my office just last week before I came out here. I said, Jeff, I'm having a hard time. I haven't been recruiting many people. A lot of my customers haven't been, I haven't been closing them. They're all blowing me off till later. I've had to reschedule my appointments. I don't know what to do. I said, let me ask you honestly. I said, how many no's did you get today from people? And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, I mean, you asked them to either come see a meeting, sit down with you for an appointment, buy something from you, join you in business. How many, many straight-up no's did you get today? And he said, well, I, geez, I, I don't know. I don't think I really got any. And I said, well, that's your problem. I said, literally, in this business, buried in all the no's are the yeses. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many no's you have to go through to get the yes. The yes is always worth it financially after you go through the no's. How, many, how much money does a yes pay in this business? Thousands of dollars. Thousands each yes. But let's just say, for sense of argument, it, it, it was $1,000 per yes. And you had to go through nine yo, no's for one yes. If you broke it down, each no is worth 100 bucks. Each no is worth 100 Let's say we took the thousand off the yes and just spread it out. Every no is a hundred bucks. The rest of your career, each no is a hundred bucks. But you have to go get them and count them and account for them. How many no's would you go get? You'd go get tons of them, wouldn't you? Yeah, and you'd smile. Hey, would you like to come down to a meeting? Here's our company, da, da, da. No, all right. Boom. I call someone else quickly. You'd be on the phone. That's the number one reason people don't make it in this business. They make that call, and whatever script they use, the best words they use, the, someone says no, and oh, they're done. I'm done making calls for tonight. Pick it up again next year. <laughs> Why do people go to meetings without guests? Because they didn't get enough no's the last three days before the BPM. Why don't people have more sales? They didn't get more no's out on financial strategy point. Why didn't they get more financial strategy? Because they didn't get no's asking if someone wants to do a financial strategy. It's all a matter of how many no's you get. And you don't take them personally. Deprogram yourself, please. Enjoy the process. Go get those no's. Don't feel bad. Check it off. You're one step closer to a yes. And the yeses pay so well in this business, folks. They pay so well. I don't know anyone here who loves prospecting, but we, the, everyone in the front row knows how much it pays to do it. And that's why we love doing it. And we'll do it all day long. Ask Dan Charlier, what's it gonna take for you to go to CEO? And he's gonna say, I need to go out there and go wide. I need to go talk to more people. I need to go get more no's. How, Rob Day, how you going to SEVC? That's how he's doing it, going to get more no's. Your next promotion, it's only a matter of you going out and get more no's. If you don't get a lot of, I would say you should be getting a minimum of 10 no's a day. Rock bottom minimum 10 a day. If you're not, you're not even trying. You can't go look at yourself in the mirror, as Ed says, and, and feel good about yourself. 
You need to go get your 10 every single day minimum. You'll get your yeses. See, that's the great thing about great leaders in this company. Emotionally, a yes doesn't put them on the roof and a no doesn't put them through the floor. We're pretty consistent along the way. You interested in our company? No, are you sure. We try a few different closing techniques. Nah, okay. We just move on to the next person. We're not upset about it. Someone says, yeah, I'll do it. I'll roll that six million bucks. Hey, great. Let's go do it. Then we do it. Dan doesn't believe me. I guess I would get more excited about that. But you know what? Not till the check came in, the paperwork was processed, and the money was in my account. How many new guys get too excited? Yeah! And then the guy calls the next day. I changed my mind. I want to hold up. Oh! Yeah! Oh! Ah! Oh! They're just an emotional wreck. They're on a roller coaster. You see these teammates? They can't control their emotions. It's good to be passionate. It's good to be emotional. But you're not supposed to let your emotions control you. You're supposed to control your emotions. You're supposed to be your commitments, not your emotions in this business. You know how many people are their emotions? I'm mad. I am mad. No, you're acting mad. I'm happy. See, it's all a matter of how you're acting. You're supposed to be your commitments. Your commitment is to win in this thing. Your commitment is to provide for your families. Your commitment is to grow as a person. Your commitment here is to make this work so you don't have to go back to the job you hate. Your commitment is to be somebody in the short life. Make a big difference. Enjoy the process. That's your commitment. Well, go be that. Try not to be your emotions. You can be emotional, but don't be your emotions. Folks, I'm going to wrap this up here right now. we got so much more for you. But i got to let you know, you're some of the luckiest people in the company and in the country. Here we are in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. The freest, richest, most powerful country in the world. Our forefathers died so that we could have this freedom. And here we are in the best company in the best country in the world with the greatest opportunity and what are you doing with it? That's the question I want to send you off to dinner with. What are you doing with the greatest opportunity in American business today? And what are you going to do with it from here? Folks, what's that? Get more no's. I need the MDs up here in the front of the room. Folks, we need to be here at 6 50. You thought this afternoon was great? Wait till this evening. It's going to get a lot better. Everybody take off. MDs, we'll see you up in the front. Have a good dinner. I cannot hear myself.